be a whole load of frustration. Next week I'm out of the office because I have to go into the hospital on Tuesday for an outpatient procedure. And I have to do some things on the day before to get ready for that. So it's another two days of vacation used up because of medical things. Don't, uh, I, I don't think I've used that many, but they do add up over time. You know, it's two days here, one day there. I had to get two MRI. I had to have uh, an X-ray, which. I have to drive an hour to get there, and that's um, so that's a day off. I had to get two MRIs on different days, so that's two days off because it's to the same place, different department, and so you know I'm just chewing up the vacation, doing one day here, two days there. And don't know that I've got very much left to take for enjoyable things before the next round of vacation happens on the beginning of September. Fall, I think we've got we've got an event at church which I usually take at least most of the week off. So this is going to be in a very inefficient way of doing this last block because it's like it's not very far across the, uh, the rows. But there's less climbing and descending um, at each end, or in the middle. I'm going to be able to do this at six miles an hour, not two miles an hour. How's the harvester doing? Uh, I might have to consider uh, bringing out the service trailer again. Oh, public service announcement. If you have an external UPS battery for your desktop PC, and it's been a while since you ran a test on it, run a test on it. Um, I mean, I bought, I bought this PC 2017. I think we had a power outage which caused a bit of a glitch in the SSD and at that point I decided, you know what, I need a battery. Just so you, you plug the battery in, it's got a UPS lead and an application running on your PC and if the battery kicks in, it sends a message to the PC to say, you're running on battery and the PC will say, okay, how long have I got to go? And it'll do quick math on how quickly you're draining the battery and say, you've got 30 minutes. And the PC will go, okay, fine. Um, let me know in 15 minutes time and I'll just shut everything down. But the result is, is it, it does a soft shutdown. Um, so it doesn't cause any power spikes um, what, you know, to the hard drive or anything because the power fails, it just okay, I've got about 15 minutes left, I will just shut down and it'll tell the you know, windows to turn off 
and um, you don't end up with lots of electronic damage because the power just dropped to zero suddenly. So it's a useful thing to get. They're not very expensive and if you've got a $3,000 <coughs> desktop PC, even a $2,000 desktop PC, four or five hundred bucks for an external battery is well worth the price. Well, we had a power outage last week. Six second power outage. And I checked the computer battery status and it said basically you have 17 seconds of power left in the battery. It's at 60% charge. So it's like, yeah, that doesn't sound too good. So I ran, I waited till the battery had recharged off the mains power and then I ran a test and it basically said, yeah, you've got about three minutes of power in this battery when it's full. And I don't even believe it's got three minutes because the power dropped for six seconds and it said you've got 17 seconds left. So yeah the battery is depleted the battery is past its life and it's quite an easy job to uh, just replace the battery you just have to order a new one and uh, take the old one out install the new one and your pc is protected mine i think mine reports generally it's got an hour and 15 hour and 20 minutes um, on the uh, clock before the power to the power in the battery dies and I'm running the modem the router and uh, PC and screen and not sound so you know I'm running most of the critical stuff so if power drops I don't lose the internet I you know game sound drops but I, you know, nothing else ha untoward happens and I don't get a spike through the hard drive because um, it doubles up as a surge protector as well so that's all good um, but you really need obviously you need to make sure that the battery is good isn't gonna lose charge now we also last last year year before we um, oh I left the engine um, we had a whole house generator installed so I actually only need 30 seconds of battery power long enough for the generator to start and then take over with the power supply so the battery doesn't have to actually last that long but it has to be there we ran a test on my wife's battery that's absolutely fine but yeah if if you have a desktop PC with an external UPS battery supply go into the battery app on your PC and run a self test just make sure that the battery has enough charge to do what you need it to do and if the battery life has degraded either go on the website of the company that makes the UPS or go on Amazon and uh, look for a replacement battery and get that puppy installed uh, handy hint obviously uh, watch the YouTube video on how to replace the battery before you unplug everything from the, bat the battery because um, I'm old it's difficult to read uh, or watch YouTube videos and see the details on my cell phone and uh, 
my PC's not on and so I can't um, access YouTube from there. And also since the modem and um, router are also plugged into my battery, Mrs. Osa's PC can't get to YouTube either. Although her PC's on a different battery, so her, ba her PC was running, it's just that she didn't have internet because, hey, they did a thing. So anyway, yeah, that was the first public announcement. Go, go check your battery. Make sure you've, uh, it's holding a sufficient charge. Okay, that's barley. We already have our barley in the uh, in the place. Field three is done. We get paid five thousand four hundred nineteen. Oh, so we get paid five thousand four hundred nineteen for doing it. We would have got a thousand six hundred from selling the grain. But instead, what's gone and happened is we've just added that grain to this total, so we now have more barley to process. So that's fine. We have to do 18, 22, and 93. 18. Oh, look, there's 18. Eighteen, twenty-two, and ninety-three. Okay. Eighteen, twenty. Oh, twenty-two is on that road. And then ninety-three is somewhere over the rainbow. Down there. Okay. So I'm coming out of this one. Looks like the access is probably over here, along this road. Okay. And 22, so we'll go through there, along here into that field, and we'll come down here and into there. So, I need to... I want to drive this back in order to look for the entrance into 18 as opposed to um, how about we don't try and run any of the pedestrians over it's easier gonna it's gonna be easier to do it with this tractor this way than it is do it with the harvester and it's slower and if I take the wrong turn it's gonna take longer actually that's quite nice we can come in here So access to 22 is just to our left there, so that's handy. Okay. And 18 is the field we want here, which should be the one just to our right. And that's the entrance, okay. So probably a little bit... Um, the word for it. A little bit uh, anti-social of me parking in the lane to the animal dealer but it is what it is and it means I can block the road so that I can get the harvester down the road having to fight traffic and somebody having to reverse. Anyway. I'll try not to run over the uh, step there. 
So not sure where the canola is going. Actually, this is wheat. One of the wheats is going to the grain mill. Hopefully this one. Because if it ends up being this one, let's select it, the harvester, yeah, we can unfold that. And start unfolding the head, actually don't start unfolding the head, I really need to get this completely turned into the field like that. Before we try any shenanigans there. So this is wheat, one of the wheats is going to... Um, the market down opposite the BGA and the other one is going to the grain mill. I'm going to guess this is the one that goes to the market and the orchid one is the one that goes to the grain mill because just why not. We'll get this rolling. And if this field does go to the grain mill I'm going to have to get the uh, grain cart turned around because it's not facing towards the grain mill. We'll see. Anyway. So yeah, last week didn't get any more done with the railway. Um, I did order a trammel, which for those of you who don't know what that is, is a device that lets you plot a circle. Um, so in math it's a compass. It has a point at one end and a, a thing to hold a pencil with at the other end. And it, it sort of splits apart like it's two legs. Well, um, a trammel doesn't have the bit in the middle. All, all it is is a thing that holds a pin and a thing that will hold a pencil and a friction clamp that allows you to clamp it to a, a, a completely other thing which you have to provide. So you get a piece of wood that's four feet long and you clamp the pin to one end and you clamp the pencil holder to the other end and stick a pencil in it and you can inscribe a four foot radius circle if you have a six foot piece of wood or metal you could have a six foot radius circle so 12 feet total um, just using this thing so this is going to be very handy for me marking um, arcs on sheets of wood so that I can cut the track bed for going round corners and the like. So for me a very useful device um, and didn't cut, cost much more than 20 bucks because all you're paying for is these two metal clamps and a pencil holder and a pin. Okay, how are we doing? 28%? Oh, we're going to get around this field twice, three times. No trouble. So I think last time the young kids were here, the girl and I went to the lumber store and bought some sheets of plywood. And um, this week we get the opportunity to cut them or to mark one out and then jigsaw them into the shape I want. Hello. Hi. What you doing? Hi. What else are you doing? Saying hi. Oh, what's mommy doing? Sleeping. What's Bailey doing? Sleeping, playing on her iPad. Oh, playing on her 
iPad. That's good. What are you doing? Do I need to plug a computer? Oh, I will see. So yeah, I figure this week I'll be uh, marking out pieces of wood, getting the jigsaw out, and um, cutting up the sheets into something resembling the shapes I need. And I may have to make a decision about whether I want... Hello? Oh, that's... okay. In a panic, teenage Osa's Steam account was suddenly being used, and she's supposed to be in a facility that doesn't have internet and has a uh, a monitored phone with the restrictions on who you can talk to as a teenager. So, uh, yes small child is playing on the computer, he's playing on her Steam account, which might be against the terms of service, but technically it's my account, because I made it on her behalf, so that's fine. No panics. So yes, I will, uh, I will probably mark out at least some of the boards I want cut and uh, do some sawing. Maybe with some assistance. But interesting, okay, so we also got a surprise um, bonus this week. As far as the model train goes, uh, all I was doing, was I was planning to have two isolated loops because half the loop is going to be in the countryside with no switches at all because it's in the countryside and you know, if you're modelling the early 1900s you can only have switches within a few hundred yards of a signal box and you don't have a signal box in the middle of nowhere just because it seemed like a good idea at the time. <coughs> there has to be a reason. So if, if you had, say, a split off from the main through route to a branch, you would have a signal box there because there needs to be signalling, there needs to be switches to allow trains to uh, diverge onto the branch. But um, otherwise, you will see a switch box either at one end of a station, passenger station, or at a freight yard. And sometimes, if it's a big passenger station, you'll have a switch box at both ends because the, the switches themselves, or um, turnouts, or whatever you want to call them, used to be controlled from the signal box by a long metal bar. Actually a couple of metal bars usually split in the middle with some form of opposing joint so that when and the bars would be exactly the same length on both sides of that joint but during the summer when the metal expands both pieces of metal expand the same amount so um, you don't have a discrepancy in the point throw position. You know, you always, as far as the lever in the switch box is concerned, you throw it the same distance whether it's hot or cold. The, the expansion of the metal is taken care of by the way the whole contraption is assembled. <coughs> But the longer the piece of metal, the harder it is for somebody to switch a turnout. 
So usually what happens is you want your signal box as close to all of the turnouts as you can and you don't want, um, you know, the result of that is when you do have turnouts you will have, they'll be in a concentrated area. If you think about the approach to a major station, they're all there right at the entrance. And then once the um, the lines leading away from the station have been established, it's just a clean run to the next station. You won't have switches for or turnouts further out. So that's kind of the philosophy there. And if the station is huge.